Hello and welcome to DV Test Podcast number... Damn, I don't remember what the numbers are. It's been so long since I've done this. I'll figure it out and put it in the video and title. Thanks. Apparently I'm on number 10. Um, so this is DV Test Podcast episode number 10. And with me today I have uh, the two masterminds behind Project FDL, Jesse and Jackie. So if you guys would like to introduce yourselves now... Hey, so this is uh, this is Jesse from Project FDL. I'm the original uh, creator of the FDL one and the FDL two, um, which for any of your listeners who have never heard of it before, they're basically fully 3D printed blasters, um, completely controlled with Arduino's, like just a electronics wonderland type blaster. Um, so I. Uh, Originally created the FDL-1. The FDL-1 was a kind of revolver, uh, mega turret-type blaster that was designed to go in an office, and it kind of sat on, like, a little turret base, and it was Wi-Fi enabled. You could control it from your phone, all the good things. Uh, And then the FDL-2 is the most recent FDL, and it is a full elite mag-fed blaster with uh, select fire and all the good stuff. And I hear Jackie is involved somehow, too? Yeah, that's me. Uh, kind of married into it and then ended up finding my own niche in the market. Uh, I do most of the hydro dipping and also all the blasters and print stuff as well as customer service. Uh, so let's do a little bit of history on you two. So where did you get into the Nerf hobby? Where did you find this? How did you start playing? Um, and were you doing any modding pre-FDL, or did you jump straight into, like, let me figure out how to make a 3D printed blaster? So I got into the Nerf, not even really the Nerf community, but, like, Nerf in general, uh, when I started working at an office that allowed Nerf guns. So I, I work in, like, corporate software type thing. I sit in a cubicle, all the fun software things. Um, but yeah, like I said, I started working in an office and the day that you walk in at that office, they gave you a, a Nerf gun as you walked in and it was kind of a daily occurrence that we had Nerf Wars there and it was just this really cool thing. Um, and then it's kind of a funny, but one day I kind of like, I got shot in the face or the eye or something. And I was like, the be- there has to be a better way to do this. I have to be able to sit at my desk and shoot a Nerf gun from up above me and not have to worry about getting hit from people. Um, so it all kind of started from there. I like went to the store and I bought a the cheapest electronic blaster that I could find, and that turned out to be a Strife. And I actually, before FDL was an FDL, I had it built on like this wooden turret with like servos, and it was just a fairly dirty mod at the time. Oh, it was janky. It was. <laughs> it was very janky, but it worked, and it worked on a little RC remote, and it was it was cool to use. Um, and then the Christmas following, I think it was maybe three months after I started working at that office, Jackie actually got me, uh, my first 3d printer for Christmas. And I think that was maybe the worst decision she made. (laughs) (laughs) It was the best worst decision and it wasn't exclusively mine. There was a lot of prodding from his part. So I had exactly the one that I wanted kind of picked out, but, um, anyway, so I, we put the 3d printer together and he did. Yeah, I did. (laughs) He's saying we. But um, I had had, so I worked for my father-in-law for a long time uh, doing AutoCAD stuff. Like I used to draw uh, HVAC and plumbing stuff into like commercial buildings. So I had this CAD background behind me um, and I've been a maker for a long time, just like making everything. I made beer before Nerf. And And woodworking before that. Yeah, woodworking and things before that. Um, But, you know, I kind of just went all in on it. And I realized because I had a 3D printer, it could be anything I wanted. And so I just went to town on it and, and I built the FDL-1. And um, after the FDL-1 was built, I actually started a Kickstarter uh, for the FDL-1 because a lot of the guys in my office were like, wow, this is so cool. Like, And you have a printer, you can make more than one of these things, right? And I kind of thought about it and I was like, wow, yeah, I totally could. This could be like a really cool thing. Let's, you know, and let's try to get it out there. And the one thing that I needed to do at the time was to do a Kickstarter. Um, so we did a Kickstarter 
And it didn't go super, you know, awesome. Like we didn't meet our goal or anything, it but it was 70% still, funded. yeah, we did a really good job. And, um, you know, but during that Kickstarter, I, you know, everybody knows Drac, right? And I got an email from Drac. And my, I didn't even realize what was happening. And my son was like super happy. And he was like, you realize who just emailed you, right? So I got an email from Drac. He wanted to see it. He wanted to do a video of it or whatever. And in the midst of talking to him, I learned about the SCNC and like how this whole big community existed. And like, turns out it's this full worldwide, you know, sort of community to be into. Um, so, you know, the FDL one started out as very much as like a maker project, but like in the process of doing the Kickstarter and everything kind of got into nerf that way. That's a really cool story. Uh, personally, I have a really important question about the FDL one. Why did you start with mega darts? Because bigger is better. Oh, babe. <laughs> no, for real. I thought about that all day and that was the... <laughs> That was the best. No, for real, like in the office. So when, when I first started working at that place, they handed us triads when we walked in. Right. And I was like, okay, cool. I can shoot three darts. This is great. But then I, I eventually ended up in an area with other teams who had, who were like the more seasoned office nerfers. Right. And they had, they all had Magnuses. And there was the one dude who thought he was the badass of the office because he had the, the like mega bow, you know? So like at the time that the FDL one was created, it was just like we were all using megas in the office. And like when you're a grown up playing with toys, you always want like the biggest darts possible. So it was partially that. And it was also like, you know, I found that strife and it shot the little darts. And I hadn't really seen a lot of other blasters that were flywheel mega blasters at the time, like if any. So it was kind of just this really cool engineering, you know, challenge to get into. Okay, cool. So, continuing on, after the FDL-1 came the FDL-2, um, and you switched over, you made a lot of changes. You went from Mega to Elite, from a turret to a handheld, and from like a revolver style to MagFed. What inspired all these changes? So, like, on a really kind of emotional level, I'll say that I fell in love with Nerf, sort of, at that time. You know, like I was explaining that the FDL one, <laughs> don't mock me, like the FDL one came about as like a maker thing. It was like this engineering challenge. Like it wasn't meant to be pretty or anything. It was just meant to like fire darts in a cool way. Um, but then once I started like going to Nerf Wars and like realizing that a lot of people go to Nerf Wars and it's this really cool, awesome thing, like... I realized that it, I wanted it to not necessarily be something that sat in a cubicle, right? Like I wanted something that was super war friendly and like very efficient and take it out there and it just does its job. And like the FDL one I used before the FDL two, but it was real heavy and it was real cumbersome and expensive. Yeah. And expensive. And it was really complex. So like when I started selling FDL ones, I didn't sell a lot of them cause they were really expensive and they're really hard to build. Um, you know, so I wanted something that was easier to build and a little less complex, but it still had a lot of the cool features. Um, you know, so the FDL2 became a thing. And I think, like, the one moment that I had when, like, the FDL2 was, like, I definitely needed to do this was I went to NVZ, which was, like, the big, you know, HVZ event prior to NWAR. And... I just walked around that whole time and I just looked at all of the blasters that everybody had and like the full swath of what everybody was really into. And I hate to say it, but I saw a lot of the guys with like the really cool rapid strikes and the rapid strike had that like full auto type awesomeness to it. And, you know, it was mag fed and the mags just make the feed system really easy. Um, you know, and it was just, I really wanted something that more people were into. And like, we, I got a lot of feedback from the Kickstarter of, Hey, this is a really cool thing, but like you would never war with that. It's just not practical for it. So the FDL two was like, all right, let's make one that's really practical and we'll go from there. And continuing on with that sort of trend of making things for people. When did uh, the FDL project kind of transition from, hobby into more of a business 
Uh, I'm assuming it happened at some point during the FDL 2's existence, but you said you were already selling FDL 1's before that? Yeah, so directly after the Kickstarter, you know, we didn't fund, but, like, I didn't give up. So I opened up an Etsy shop, and I sold a few of them on there. And then the FDL 2 came around, and I started selling those on there, too. And I did this pre-order of FDL 2's, and I think I built... 10 of them at once real quick. And then I kept the shop kind of open after that. And it got like really intense and it got to the point where I realized like I couldn't really do it myself. And that's kind of where Jackie started coming into play. Like she kind of well, they, got they, me they, going. But I also come from a retail background. So as someone who had been in retail and running businesses, I saw that, we need to as a family, because, you know, we are parents. We do have two kids who are pretty damn awesome, mm-hmm. um, but require parenting as well as Jesse was working, I was working, and we were trying to figure out how to manage the FDL stuff as well. And after months of scheduling, literally scheduling the household where Jesse would work from after dinner until midnight every night by himself, it just got to the point where we decided that we need to do this as a team and really be able to give 150% to the people who are investing in us. And you're still working on and improving the FDL too. Um, You recently, semi-recently released the VX, uh, which added a bunch of cosmetic things. But before then, your big update was a change on the internals that made it fire, uh, increase its rate of fire even more. Um, what are your kind of ultimate goals with all the upgrades? Are you going for the highest FPS you can, highest rate of fire? Like, what's the next big uh, step up in FDL2? So that's that's one of those things that has, like, kind of matured over the life of the FDL. I think at first, you know, the, the FDL2 was, yeah, let's get it to shoot really hard. And then... Like we found other motors and the two plus became it. So the two plus takes you from like a stepper motor, which is a really cool, you know, motor to to use as a pusher because it's very accurate. It's very, it's almost like intelligent, right? But it didn't go very fast. <laughs> so the next step was, okay, let's just put a DC motor in there with some cool metal gears and something really rugged. And that brought the rate of fire up. Um, and then it seems like nowadays, like there's this big push for, Let's shoot really hard. Let's shoot really fast. Um, You know, so the FDL does that. I'm I'm not super concerned about, you know, let's break 200 feet per second with it or or 300 or, like, whatever to get there. I'm still, like, enjoying the game of Nerf, you know. So for me, it's more I want the FDL to do everything. And that's kind of what it's blossomed into. And, like, the more that we sell and the more people – I watch use them and just hear about people using them. It's, it's more of like, I want you to have like one blaster that you can take to any game you want. I know like we went over to Scotland and the UK and a lot of their games are very low FPS. Like we went to terminal infection and it was a hundred feet per second max. But we were in a mall inside and it was, it was one of those environments where that was the best use of it. Yep. And we could just turn it down. We turned it down to like 10% power there and we could still use it. And then, you know, like HVZ games like End War and things like that are are 130 and it works for that. And then you take it out to like a super stock war like the SCNC and it works there. And, you know, it may not shoot as hard as like really high end long shot or like a caliber or something like that, but like you can still hold your own and you have the rate of fire over people. So it's not necessarily that I want it to be any one thing. It's like, I want it to be everything at once. And I, you know, that's obviously like really big shoes to fill, but like, that's kind of the, the goal with the whole thing. And, um, you know, we keep moving, moving towards that. And also on top of that, like we, we've moved into this kind of very high customization niche too. And that's sort of the power of, of the fact that it's 3d printed is you can get it all in like different colors and every piece can be different colors. And Jackie does the hydro dipping and stuff. So like ultimately I want it to kind of be everything for everyone, you know? Definitely. I really like the versatility of it. And I, I definitely see based on uh, conversations in other groups and stuff like that. And the FDL group itself, 
uh, which you started recently. That's definitely one of the more popular aspects of it. Yep. Yeah, it's and the more people use it, the more we realize like it really is good for everything. And people just like them so much. Like it's cool to make sure that they can use it for every every game that they want. Uh, speaking of all the customization options, ha- I know you guys have, I've seen a lot of them posted on your Facebook page um, and the Facebook group. Do you guys have any like particular favorites that you've made for people that you that you have like really fond memories of putting together or just you really um, found a color scheme that someone else pointed out to you that you really liked? I'll let Jackie take that one. Uh, a, a lot of it's been just really fun because a lot of the process that I go through with every new person that gets a blaster, whether they're getting, you know, a basic two plus, which is totally fine, or getting a fully decked, you know, two X with all the attachments is just finding out what they want. And a lot of people come to me and they're like, Hey, I like these colors. Okay, cool. I'll send them different filament colors. And then from there, we kind of figure out what they want it to be. I mean, we actually have a black and white sheet that we have people either color. We've had multiple people color them in. They're super fun. Um, but also where they can indicate every single piece that they want in a color. Because we have to print it. So if they want certain things in different ways, we're going to get it to them. Um, I mean, there's there's so many cool blasters that we've done. I mean, there's there's been so many that when it's done and Jesse goes through and tests them, he kind of looks at them and is like, man, this is, I don't want to let it go. It's like a baby, but those are the worst when you don't want to put them in a box and ship them out. Oh, but they're the worst best. I mean, that's the the thing. Like, cause the whole hydro dipping thing started um, back in October of last year. Uh, A guy named Michael Lim in Australia reached out to me and was like, Hey, I really want camo. I was like, well, I can't paint. So I don't know what to tell you. And then back and forth through conversation, um, hydro dipping came up and, I had never done it before. I was very, very new into all of this. I was still learning the parts that I was printing on the FDL, let alone getting into custom stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But throughout the course of about seven to eight weeks, he was patient with me. And that was right when we were having the 2X come out. So a lot of people went like, oh, okay, let me get a 2X instead of the 2 plus that I ordered. So it was a very fluid time as far as change was concerned there. But I did a lot of practices and I have a lot of really sad dips, but I also came out learning a lot about it. And I sat on the YouTube, which I, I'm not really a big YouTube person. So this was a lot of time for me to spend watching videos, but I watched Drax video and saw how he did it. And I watched it four or five times and asked questions when I could to him and, and like 800 other videos. too. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, there were just so many videos, but that's what I started with. And, you know, the comfortability of knowing Drac helped that, you know, I could kind of see his process and ask him questions. Um, but then started dipping and the beauty of 3d printing is PLA takes amazingly to hydro dip. You don't have to prime. You don't have to sand, you print it and you can dip it. So if I made a mistake, I could print another. And that's, Definitely not something that you have in the modding world when you're taking a Nerf shell and doing something with it. And I've been almost very (laughs) slow into doing any kind of dips on actual Nerf shells because it's not as easy to make a mistake, a new one, or, you know, make a new shell for it. Um, So all in all, then we did Michael's, the Ghost Blaster, you guys may see on our Instagram or Facebook page. Um, That's kind of what started the hydro dipping. And then... So, and that was like a red, black, gray... Red, black, gray, and and the digital camo over white. Yeah. And And then we did, it said Ghost on the side in this cool, like, like, I don't know, NASCAR font. And it was, it was just more of like a block slant, a slanted kind of font that it was just, it was awesome. And it was exactly what he wanted down to, I mean... The, I mean, like our, our customers can choose, you know, what color hardware they want and everything else. But I mean, he had such a design in mind and we went back and forth and that kind of started how we were going to start approaching people's blasters. Like they're, they're super cool. They're super versatile, but now we can make them completely individual and people ask for copies of other people's blasters and we do it, but we do like slight changes. So they're never mm-hmm. exactly the same as the first person's, but it's, it's been really cool to see what people evolve to. I mean, I personally love, um, we have a customer named Brent and Brent has eight blasters from us. Now he personally owns three because he likes different looks on blasters. So he has a UV one that's hydro dipped and then it's UV green with hydro dip over it, which is so cool. 
And then he has a black and gold one to match his son. So his son has one, but then he made one for his girlfriend. And he said that based on the glitter one that I had at end war, he wanted something similar to that, but he wanted to do something with the galaxy kind of like spacey look to it. Galaxy one was cool. That one's just awesome. And that was like the beginning of like, Oh my gosh, there's gorgeous filaments that we can use. And yeah, they're expensive, but if we use them right in the right places, it really makes a statement. And then the, the hydro dipping was just, I was in the zone and starting to get really comfortable with it. And it was for a customer that was a return customer. So there's a certain joy that you take in like being able to send something new out to them. Mm -hmm. And that one just turned out so well. And it it was just, it was a showstopper as well as something that I was really proud to put in someone's hands. And then that, that's kind of the bar that I've set for myself is if, you know, if, if I want to keep it personally, then that's a good blaster. Mm -hmm. You don't really know like into the, until the last minute, like how good something is going to be too. and how well it fits together. Yeah. Like you see all the parts when she hydro dips them and like, you know, you kind of lay them out on a table, but like until it's all together and it's making that like really distinctive you sound. Know, brushless <laughs> sound, like it all comes together. I think for me, one of my favorites, uh, when we discovered this like UV reactive filament, mm-hmm. um, Frank C in the UK, he, and this was the first time we had really put LEDs in a blaster He was like, I want UV LED and I want UVs inside. He wasn't the first though. Yeah, no, we had. Because Michael and and SoCal. Yeah, Michael's was cool because there's like lots of translucent. I was the first LEDs actually, but he was the first customer LEDs. But uh, so Frankie wanted UV translucent filament and UV lights inside. And I was like, wow, this is going to be kind of a pain in the butt. But like, how cool will that be? And like when it was done, there was four different ways that you could look at this blaster. And it looked different. So, like, you could look at it in full light. You could turn the UV lights on in full light. You could turn the lights off with the lights on inside. Like, it was just like this, I don't know. I can't even explain it. Like, it looked different in every lighting. It was really cool. And the translucent really made it pop. It was kind of candy-ish. I mean, it's just, it's such a striking green. And we've had many people do the UV green after that. And it's it's just, it's a color that we love to play with because it's such a, it's just Mm -hmm. such a fun blaster. But, I mean, they're all so cool, too, like, realistically. Every single one has yeah. a lot of love that goes into it, and it's cheesy, yes, I know, whatever, but we're doing this in our basement, and... Everyone really has a story, too. And, like, I, we can't tell you guys the stories, because it's almost like this doctor-patient sort of thing, <laughs> but, like, everyone has this really cool story behind it, and why why people want what they want. It's really cool. It's just, like, it's so cool to be a part of that. So I know you and Jackie also have your own custom FDLs. What did you guys do differently in your own? Um, your son also has one. Um, I don't know if your other child, your daughter, yes, also has one. But w- what have you guys done with your family's FDLs that are special and different from everyone else's? So Zoe kind of has an F. So Zoe is our daughter. Aiden is our son. Aiden is probably the most badass 13 year old <laughs> nerfer that I've ever seen. Like I fear him most on the field out of anybody. <clears throat> um, his is pretty straightforward. It's like a translucent almost He wanted clear, but it's really hard to print clear. Unless um, you want to spend money. Like a yeah, lot of money. <laughs> it's that and like a translucent pink and it's, he's really into pink he's and really, those two really colors. So it's exactly what he wants. And like his caliber and matches that too. And his caliber is glow in the dark and mine's not. And that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> but, um, his is a straightforward 2 plus. I've tried to get him to upgrade and Jackie to upgrade to a 2X and they just refuse to do it. Because, you know, it's, people. It's just user interface. Yeah. I personally like knobs. I like an interface that I can go teet teet and it's done rather than having to click through screens. Yep. Not good for me. So Zoe has what we've kind of called the FDLZ, which is not really an FDL at all, but it is like a brushless rapid red that we hydro dipped. And it was kind of this like. Oh, and it's such a good hydro dip. Yeah. That was like, I love Tokidoki. I don't know if anyone's familiar mm-hmm. with Tokidoki, but if you see my blasters, you know what it is. Yeah. It's just fun, cartoony, and she loved it. And it was the first shell that I've ever sanded. And yeah. we went through and sanded that. And it was it was just a lot of fun because a seven-year-old getting that level of a rapid red is pretty kick-ass. Yeah. So it was like a full custom brushless cage inside of it. And it's like literally yeah. just packed. <laughs> cool. It's literally just packed with wires in there too. Like... You, you actually can't take the battery out of it. <laughs> it's, it's, so, like, it's not Yeah, perfect. like, you have to pull the shell apart to pull, pull the battery out. That's why, like, when people ask for one of those, I, I'm not ready to do it. But, um, yeah, so Aiden's is pretty straightforward. 
Uh, Zoe has that. Jackie likes to theme her blasters. Like, what's okay. your... Well, okay, so when I started getting into this, I, we sat down in March of last year, and we were like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to start going to wars with you. This is not going to be a Jesse goes to nerf things, and I do the other stuff. It's us as a team. And I was like, well, shit, can we print and glitter? Can I say shit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just I've heard Van shit. drop the F-bomb on here. Nice. You're good. Fuck. All right. <laughs> um, so I, I like glitter. I, I don't know, hashtag Sparkle Squad, if any of you guys are familiar with that, but that's kind of my thing. Um, and Protopasta makes one of the only glitter filaments that I consistently go back to. And it was just there. It's like kind of translucent with silver flake glitter, and I fell in love with it. And I was like, okay, so I want clear blue and glitter and purple, and I want this to be like a super sparkly blaster. And Jesse did that, and he added LEDs, and it was super fun, and it was my kind of way of being like, hey, let's make things pretty. And that's kind of how we ended up starting adding a premium option to our blasters rather than just printing in the orange, black, yellow, blue, whatever. Now we have options for people to do multiple colors and glitter and that kind of stuff, and it was it was fun because like I like making things pretty. I like making things look good, and I do have that theme. I have that glitter one, which now has been updated to have Tokidoki <laughs> side mm. panels, because um, yeah, I I like Tokidoki. Uh, and then when we went to Scotland, I was like, well, we can't we can't go to Scotland not have a new one for me because you know I'm a girl. So I did a Twin Peaks themed blaster. I say girl because we like shoes and stuff. So I you know, know yeah. I, I print them. <laughs> so I have a Twin Peaks themed blaster that I hydrated at Black Chevron um, for the Red Room, for those of you guys that know Twin Peaks. And it has a custom side panel on it. And it was my first one that I actually had any of the 2V parts. Um, those were actually designed by Jake Hendler. And he let us use those files and started having that into our stuff. So I was very excited to use some of his things mm-hmm. with mine. There's a coffee theme with Twin Peaks, too. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, so um, Protopasta, again, because they're cool, uh, makes a coffee filament. It actually has coffee in the filament. I didn't realize this. It only smells like coffee while you print it. It doesn't smell like coffee afterwards. Um, but the tack rail on my blaster is printed in coffee. So mm-hmm. those you know, Twin Peaks, it's red like cherry pie. It has coffee filament on the tack rail. And I only wish that you could smell it because <laughs> that would have been awesome. So in mine, like I deem my blaster a Franken FDL because it w- it like doesn't have any of the same piece twice on it. That's not true. Now it does. Yeah, I mean it's been as it is for a while, but I don't know. Parts change out, and like as I design new things, different parts go onto there, and there's always different stuff on there. If I told you what's on there right now, I might kill you. Why? <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't know. Well, no. no, I always have like the prototype kind of stuff on there and things that I'm working out. And but um, you know, besides that, I, I mine's not like super flashy. It's like blue, but um, Jackie, it, it, it hi- does have hydro dip. Yeah, she has. Okay. A, she hydro dipped the the electronics cover in like this cool circuit sort of hydro dip for me, and I really dig that. So yeah, we each have our own kind of characteristics in our blaster. And on the topic of Nerf Wars and using other blasters, when you guys are not using an FDL in a Nerf War, what are you guys using? Want me to start? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, well, I never really nerfed until I went to a war a year ago and end war, so um, I only really use my blaster. I, I don't really like to play with other things. <laughs> I, that's not, and that's not that a, like, so but it's something. not, it's the only thing I've known. <laughs> I like, I just enjoy mine. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I kind of have to say the same thing too. Like, <laughs> you know, really I've, I've been going to wars for what, two like years. two years now. And for a long time, I think for the first year, every war I went to, I was like, all right, I got to use something different than just my FDL the whole time. And I didn't. But then you got the Caliburn, which is, I mean, like... Yeah, so I have the Caliburn now, and, like, we've printed a couple Caliburns, and I I dig that, and I really dig Slug's work. Um, But, like, you know, I carry a hammer shot sidearm, and now that the Kronos is out, those are cool. Um, Yeah, mine's pretty kick-ass, too. Yeah, I mean, it's really easy to mod a Kronos, so... Yeah, that's, like, the one thing about the Kronos is, like, ooh, I can sand and dip this pretty easily. Yeah, so, unfortunately... Like, we always use FDLs <laughs> most of the time. I wish there was a better answer for you there, Dennis. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's a really 
versatile blaster and i think we um you had this discussion in the facebook group that you made the uh project fdl user group um where we discussed how the fdl has changed the the nerf community and what changes we've seen in our individual communities and that sort of thing uh do you have any like points from that that you want to talk about here or any like changes that you personally have seen in the community from your fdl yeah um i'm gonna make a lot of assumptions when i say this and because it, it's really hard to like say oh i had this effect on a whole whole community right but like three years ago when the fdl one came out i don't think there were really other printed blasters at all like it's not like they didn't exist but they were maybe like small pistols or just something very simple or like something that wasn't worked out and now like there's a ton of 3d printed blasters and i'm not not saying like that was me right but you were just the beginning of the forefront of it and and it's just something like if you embrace new technology 3d printing was at your disposal and you and you had CAD. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the thing is it was a perfect storm of being able to do all that. I also didn't have anything, anybody to tell me not to do something. Because you didn't and, know what, yeah, the, like, there's what was a certain, in the community as far as what was yeah. frowned upon or anything like, like that. Like, I feel like I missed a lot of the pre-FDL nerf, you know? Like, there's a kind of, like, cool things that happened back in the day. And I missed that, but at the same time... Um, you know, you were exposed to everybody. Yeah, yeah no, but everybody was like, "Oh, you can't 3D print flywheels." Well, I've, <laughs> I've 3D printed flywheels, right? And now, like, there's lots of 3D printed flywheels, and like the Ultra Strife, right? The fastest strife in the world has 3D printed flywheels, and like a lot of the other blaster blaster designers have have these flywheels, and they're not just blowing up left and right like everybody thought they would. So, you know that that I think is something that maybe came about through the FDL. Um, you also have a different passion. Some people just do it because they want to do it. Like yeah. look at Radio Silence. His his remix of your blaster is awesome. Yeah. You know, so people sometimes do it just because they want to do it, and they don't want to do the long nights and mm-hmm. the builds and setting up a shop and everything else. Like this, we've always wanted to own our own business, and we were just trying to figure out if it was a brewery or a restaurant or a bakery or mm-hmm. whatever. And it just so happened that this is what he's really good at, and I fill in the blanks for it. Yep. So, and then, you know, the kind of electronics portion of the FDL, uh, I think people, you know, I know for a fact, like when I went to NVZ, there were other people that were using Arduinos and a blaster or <clears throat> microcontrollers or things like that. Um, but that seems to be very commonplace nowadays too. Um, you know, and again, not saying like that was me that did that, right? It's just like, kind of started doing that and then everybody got really into it and like it's really easy to get a 3d printer now and it's really easy to get an arduino and there's so much information out there like it's just cool to have seen all that stuff come about um there are new tools that are being used within the community yeah you know everything's kind of grown up together yeah and the nic stuff was you know like I mean, ultimately, too, right, one of my big goals, and maybe this wasn't a thing for the FDL-1, but for the FDL-2 is, like, a hobby-grade blaster, right? So that's that's a big goal of the FDL right there is I always had issues. Like, when I did the first FDL-1 mod, right, I had the strife, and the thing jammed all the time, and darts went everywhere, and I was just like, wow, this is, this is just a toy. It doesn't work well as it is, right? So... You know, my my interpretation of hobby grade is something that's designed exclusively for what you're doing with it. And it's rugged and like you go to the hobby shop to get stuff for it, not the toy store. Right. So like I I think we are starting to see more of an emergence of these hobby grade blasters and things that are like meant to go play super stock with right out of the box. And you know, there's definitely a lot of those. So it, it's cool to see all these three D printed blasters and like hobby grade and things like that. And um you know, hopefully we played a little bit of a part in all of that becoming a thing. So kind of moving a little bit uh, off topic, but still kind of on topic, I think. You also recently started the Atomic Dart League along with uh, TK1138 or Steven, depending on if you know him or not. Um, Was that a direct result of your FDL or... 
Was that just another side uh, hobby thing that you wanted to do? How are they connected? So Atomic came about as part of being part of the community. Like going back to, to like when the FDL2 created, like I kind of fell in love with Nerf and I wanted to play all the time. All the time. All, yeah, all the time. All, all the time. time. Um, so I think November of last year, just before we went to Scotland, we did a 5v5 tournament at the SCNC. And, <clears throat> you know, normal SCNC games and a lot of other wars and stuff are like you can be competitive or you can be casual and you, or you could be anywhere in between. But like when we did 5v5, it was super competitive the whole time and it was so cool. And I walked away from that just saying like, holy crap, this is what I want to do. And like, if you could ever take Nerf to a sport level, like that's how you're going to do it. If you ever want 50 people or a hundred or a thousand people, I mean, that's shooting really stupidly high, but like, if you ever want people to come and watch you play Nerf, it's going to be like competitive 5v5. And it's just like the adrenaline, adrenaline of it and like the sport of it. And there's tactics. It's just like, it's all of these cool things that I, I realized immediately playing this game type that I really wanted to be a part of. And I really wanted to help bring that to the community. And, um, you know, I had caught word that like Jangular had, had was also really into this and he has started, you know, he's got his Bay area sort of league where they are doing the blaster tag association stuff now. So, you know, we played the, the SCNC 5v5, and that was really cool. And then we went to Scotland. And in Scotland, while we were there, you know, we went there for terminal infection, which was like kind of this uh, hybrid uh, humans versus zombies, like PvP sort of thing. Um, hosted by. Hosted by Foam Dart Thunder, put on um, terminal infection. And Neil, Neil McClory is the head of Foam Dart Thunder, and Neil is the most motivated person that i have ever met and it was so cool and he was such genuinely a, yeah genuinely like genuinely what he does he loves the shit out of what he does and i like excuse my french but there's no other way to put it and it was like really inspiring and while we were there you know we played hvz and neil was like hey we've got this other thing that i really want you guys to do and like that's how fast neil talks too Hey guys, we've got this other thing we really want you to do. Like, come oh, but come an amazing it. Scottish brogue. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, "We're gonna play speedball, and it's gonna be rival, and it's gonna be stock." And I was like, "You know, I don't really want to play like stock, right? Like, I'm an FDL, dude. Like, I want to shoot hard and whatever." <laughs> but so Neil got us all into uh, this gym out there, and he had these really cool inflatable cubes, and it was five v five, and it's so. Foam Dart Thunder Speedball, and this is part of the Blaster Tag Association thing that Jangular put together, which basically unifies four, four and potentially counting game, game types for leagues to all go into. So Neil submitted like the Foam Dart Thunder uh, Speedball as one of the game types. So Speedball is you have four Artemises and one Nemesis on each team, uh, all stock. The aftermarket battery is cool for the Nemesis, right? But still a stock and we were in a gym and I was like, wow, this is stock, but this is awesome. Right. And we had the gym for like an hour, maybe two, two, two hours. It was the most tired I've ever been after playing nerf <laughs> and ever. two minute rounds and granted I'm 37 and I get tired easily. But like it was so <laughs> cool. So, you know, we got back from Scotland and just the whole way back, I was brimming with like, well, we can play five V five outside. We can play five V five at a gym. It's like competitive and like, this would be cool. And, I, I used to be pseudo into wrestling too. Like long story, when I was a kid, I hated wrestling. I thought it was just like this big showy thing. But like then WWE I WWE wrestling. WWE okay, wrestling. Yeah, let's clarify. Yeah, um, but back in my audio days, I, this is a long story. I'm not going to get into. I worked on WWE wrestling game, and I realized the art of wrestling, and it was everybody had a cool character, right? So like translate that to Nerf and. You've got the the heavy FDL guy. Are you talking like about his, the Luca, like the Lucadores? Yeah, yeah, and like yeah, Luchadors yeah. and stuff like that. Like everybody has their own kind of cool personality, and because yes. it's a competitive thing, <laughs> like it's just really cool. And then then when Jangular, uh, you know, announced the BTA thing, he had I mean, all we had that. Talked stuff. To, we, we talked to yeah, Stephen had to, about that too. Yeah. So yeah, and Stephen is if you guys don't know TK one one three eight, he is like. 
I, I'm super FDL. He's guy. either he, and, like he and his wife Emma yeah. are like our best friends, like no question. Yeah, besties. Besties. And um, but Steven's really into the game, and he's really competitive, and like he's you know he's a guy that will practice changing mags <laughs> at night. <laughs> We laugh at it, but it's true. And like, and he loves it. And he, he loves, loves it. And like, there's a million Stevens out there, right? But only one Steven. But only one Steven. TK one one three. But so, <laughs> you know, we started talking to Steven, and I was like, "Dude, five v five is so cool!" And I just like spouted it in his ear over and over and over, like until he just couldn't help but, you know, be excited. Let's about do it. this. Well, and, it, and it's something know. that as the three of us, you know, Jesse and I as Project FDL and Steven, who Steven, I, I like he is a very active admin for the SCNC. He's, he's a very organized and list-driven person, mm-hmm. which definitely feeds into me because I'm the same way. Um, and he, he just, he does everything with 150% passion and drive. And when we started talking about this and what it could be for the community and for people that we know and just overall challenging what the community is now and what it can grow into. It, not everyone has to be part of a league, but it'd be fun to watch too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets like... You know, the SCNC works as a really good place for younger kids and people kind of coming in and off the street and people just getting into Nerf and maybe people that have just done their first mod. Like, the traditional sort of war that we are all mostly used to, outside of, like, NIC wars, right? But the traditional, like, Super Sock War is very easily accessed by anybody. So, but then after a certain period of time, you're like, God, I just want more. Right. I want to play and I want to play really hard. I want to run really hard. I don't want to have to deal with like seven year old kids with I love my daughter, she's seven. But she's right. Seven. But there's a certain level of competition that I think people really want to get to. And everyone wants their squad. Frequently. Everyone yeah. wants their squads and yeah. what they can do with it. And so it's know, kind of just rights. like yeah, it's this other kind of sector of the community of wars that I think we could get into. And I'm I'm like really excited to see a lot of other leaks form and other other people try these things. Sorry, it's it, and it's just to you know clarify the Atomic Dart League. We're not looking to do this as Project FDL as a profit. We're looking to do this strictly to see what can grow within the community. It, it's definitely not something that we're looking to you know line mm-hmm. our pockets with. It's it's a endeavor in love, not definitely not endeavor yeah. of profit. I mean, it's definitely a place where like an FDL can stretch its legs, right? Like a super sock war, we keep stuff turned down most, of the time, especially when we play like zombie rounds with things get kind of close quarters. It is a place where you can get out and like a caliber and can hit real hard and like an FDL can hit real hard and everything's very fast paced. And so, yeah. yeah, it's, it's a little different, but we're really, really excited about it. That's great to hear. Um, and I guess we're kind of coming down to the last bit of it. Uh, what do you have planned for the FDL in the future? Uh, should we be expecting anything new from you in the upcoming months? Is there another letter you're adding to the end of the name Y Z something else? <laughs> We're gonna go through all of the letters of the alphabet before no. we choose a good name. We, we've learned that hopefully going forward that you know like the iterations of the FDL two are gonna get letters, and it's confusing, yeah. and we get it. We came out with the X and the V at the same time, and should I get confused? But hopefully we'll go to names next time around, like yeah. the FDL Spectra or. I, and I don't know if that's anyone's actual name for something. I was just there. Spectre. There's Spectre Nerf. I was saying Spectra. Ari. Yeah, I mean, we are always working on things. I, like... <laughs> no, I mean, just so that you don't know, I'm just, like, sitting around doing nothing. But, like, it takes a lot... Like, it's a big difference between, you know, just sitting down and doing something and kind of posting something on Thingiverse and it's there and it's, like, real fast and ready. Like... When we get into, or when I sit down to do an FDL, like, it's a long process, right? Because I, I want to make sure that it's going to be really good in the end. Like, I want to make sure everything fits together really well. And I want to make sure, like, we can make a lot of them. Or, within like, or, yeah, within <laughs> reason. Or, like, even if we make five of them, they're really easy to make. So, um, you know, I think... Again, I don't want to talk about what I'm getting into because, it's like, until it's it's a prototype sort of thing, and I know it's working, and like, it's just who I am. I, I don't like to talk about work in progress, but I can say the big goals of this time around are um, make it easier to build, make it cheaper, 
Um, We've heard you. We yeah. definitely have heard it, and we we understand the cost yeah. can be I mean, prohibitive. We, but it's going to be really tough to put like a hundred dollar brushless blaster in your hand, right? But if we can at least get it down from where we are, while still maintaining as much customization as you want, and like all these different things, it'd be really cool. So like we're working towards that, and that that comes with really being a little bigger too and being able to buy more things at a time mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Being so able it, to buy 500 motors rather than 50 yeah, so or even it, 10. So it's, it's a long road to get there. Um, I want to make it look a little better. I know that like that, that's feedback. a big thing is a lot of people are like, Oh, well it's really cool, but like it's ugly. I'm like it hurts a little bit when I hear it. And but a lot at of the people same just time, say it's ugly without saying they're sorry. <laughs> but at the same time, like, you know, it was created. It, it's, create as an engineer, right? And it is, let's get all of the machines working together and all of the computers talking together and all of these things. And like, that is what the two X is. The two X is let's put every freaking bell bell and whistle in there possible and make it work together. And then we'll come back and we'll make it pretty later. So yeah, the next time around is like, let's make it look a little better. Let's let you customize kind of how it looks more because really like the FDL2 only has a couple places where we can really put custom stuff. In like, multiple colors. We can yeah. put same color kind of stuff, you know, like how the Calibron has yep. the Calibron on the Magwell. It's just we like to do it in different colors. Yeah. So like custom things. Um, I'll be honest, it'd be cool. And I know that like every time somebody asks, like, when are we going to see a rival FDL? I immediately am like, I'm not worrying on a rival FDL. It's not happening. But like it would be cool. It would be cool to do something rival. At some we hear point. you. Yeah. We we hear it. It's just yeah. We'd like to let. At the same time, like yeah, out of darts is the rival guy, right? Yeah, exactly. And I, I respect out of darts so much that like, dude, you build your rival thing. Whenever you build your like coup de gras rival blaster, I'll come in behind, and it's not competitive. It's just and we'll buy his. <laughs> yeah, I'll be the first in line to buy him. As a matter of fact, he already told me I'm a beta tester for his like little little. <laughs> Shooter thing, but um, little shooter thing. His little Uzi. is yours a little shooter thing? Yeah, mine's a little shooter thing. <laughs> we got real off topic, and I forgot what I'm talking about now. In the future projects, in the future, what we're looking at for the rest of the year? Yeah, so uh, easier build, cheaper, prettier, much prettier. Well, I mean, but I mean, just still offering as much as we can as far as custom to yep. people. Like we just we want to keep the level of customer service that we've established in the last year up and increase it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, you know, and it's a long road. I, I doubt you're going to see anything major in the next few months. I did, like, think last year at Endwar, I was like, yeah, Endwar is going to be the place I'm going to debut, like, a new thing. And, and realistically, we have orders through Endwar, so yeah. we can't really do that because... It's really hard to design and build things at the same time, so... But we do have awesome yeah. people helping us. I mean, we have Austin and Trawa helping Trawa, us, yeah. which is awesome. Yep. Trawa, Trawa. So we're getting there. I, like... It's cool to put little things like, actually, you know, something little that, that we probably will see is I've been working on putting LEDs like in blasters really easily for a while. And I'm getting really into LEDs and lights and things like that. Um, so like little accessories like that will pop up here and there. You know, we just released like the lever mag release, which yeah, he was cool. I don't know why we didn't do that sooner. <laughs> but, you. Uh, These are all you things. Yeah. So just little things here and there until you see something really big. And uh, next time we see something big from you, or not big, but next time we see you, we'll probably be at Endor. Uh, you'll be at FoamCon with your own booth. Is there anything cool we can expect to see you guys set up at the uh, at FoamCon with? Any, uh, any cool things we should come and take a look at at your table? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's going to be tons of stuff. Like last year... Um, because me, I wanted to make pretty things for Endor last minute. Um, we printed two blasters out to bring. One was um, a, the glitter, of course, because glitter, um, black and red blaster that um, Marco and his dad Steve got at Endor, which was really cool. And then we also did the watermelon one, which was white, bright magenta pink and green. Mm-hmm. And this year I am aspiring to have three to five blasters completely ready to go for sale as well as we're hoping to have some bundles there. Just some mm-hmm. things that if people are traveling and want to save on shipping, we'll have, we'll deliver some orders there, but then I'm going to bring a bunch of stuff that I've hydro dipped and we'll have blasters to play with. And Steven will be at our booth as well as, you know, Aiden who's always with us, which is really cool. And 
we'll, we'll just have a lot of fun stuff. And we just want to talk to people and get our blaster in their hand again and just let them play with the FDLs to really see what it's about. Yeah. It, like end war last year was a really big turning point for us. Well, cause it was you taking it seriously. Yeah. Like as a business. Well, and it was so many people got to see them like in use and hold them and fire. Like I, I love the picture of, um, a, Jay Nerf. Yeah, yeah Jay Nerf was my I'm favorite like last year. smiling behind him. It's the best picture. Like, he knew what he was getting into already, but he grabbed it and just the grin on his face is like... What? And it was mine. It was my glitter one. Yeah. So I love when people hold my glitter one. But that's, like, what keeps us going is that grin on people's face. So, you know, we'll have we'll have some cool stuff. We'll, we'll have a ton of merchandise to patches. And, and, well, and, and, and yeah, and we'll have uh, more info about Atomic Dart League. So if anyone's curious and wants more information while they're there... Come talk to us. We'll we'll be all ro- rotating throughout the booth. We're hoping to actually go rotate actual phone con to yeah. be able to see all the other people. But at the same time, I mean, it was a great thing for us last year to meet so many people in the community and mm-hmm. put faces to names and just make new friends. I mean, we, we made a lot of friends last year that we consider very close friends due to that. Yep. It's exciting. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Do you guys have anything else you guys want to talk about or anything that I forgot to mention that should be discussed about the FDL? Uh, anything like that? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, I think we covered that all pretty well. Hmm? Rem- what? Dan says, remember to ask them to ask the next, the next person, person question. the question. Okay, so I was going to do this thing where I was going to have each – person i interview or a group of people ask the next person without knowing who they are a question and that lasted like one episode and didn't work out so well uh but maybe i'll try doing it again do you guys without knowing who the next person is because i don't even know who the next person is do you guys have a question for them that you want answered why do you nerf i like that one but it's it's like that's that's so um Fine, you come up with one. Fine. Three, two. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, what is your favorite off-topic Reddit subreddit? Ooh, that's a good one. That's juicy. Yeah, because that tells a lot about someone. Yeah. Because, like, mine... No, you don't want to know mine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know mine. No, actually, it's like... I, I mean, it's, it's a toss-up between a lot of them, but mainly, ah, oh, what the fuck. I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> Why is the FDL the best blast in existence? <laughs> ah, see, we don't think it is, though. I mean, like, we think ours is pretty tits, but, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't say it's the best blaster in existence. I like all blasters. Oh, really? You're going to like, I like all blasters. I'm Switzerland. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing that. All right. Well, I think that's it for this episode. Uh, thank you both for being on here and talking to us and me about your about your blaster and your business. Uh, and taking time out of your, I'm assuming, really busy schedule, building like a billion of them right now. Uh, so thank you guys both for being here. No problem, man. Thank yeah, you it, for having us on. It's been great. It was awesome. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for listening slash watching. Um, tune in, to hopefully, next week. I don't really know how the schedule is going to work out. Hopefully weekly, but we'll see. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.